What is up, Zoolmates? In this video, I'm gonna be walking through how I mix and produce acoustic guitar, specifically how I mix acoustic guitar in my new single, Blue Light. It is dropping July 29th in two weeks. You can pre-save it, link in description. And if it's out, that's cool. I'm gonna be showing you how I mix single guitar tracks using compression, reverb, and parallel mixing. And then I'm also gonna be showing you what I usually do, which is doubling my guitars, mixing it that way, and making it sound great in both stereo outputs like monitors and headphones, and then also mono outputs like the telephono. Let's hop right into Ableton. I'm now blue. And here's Ableton Live. So this song only has a quick little acoustic guitar section and it's right after the first chorus. So I'm just gonna solo the guitar recordings that we're working with. There we go, it's nothing too crazy and I'm gonna play it in context with the song. So here is the end of the chorus with no vocals. All right, as you can tell, we have two main guitar recordings left and right right here. Let's solo both of them. There we go. And then we have this harmonics track, which is just really verbed out. So I'm going to be muting the, 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 the harmonics track, and then I'm also going to be muting this right track right here. So let's only focus on this left track. Let's turn off all of these audio effects. I'm going to start this video off walking through how I would mix one single guitar recording. So we're going to move it to the middle. We're going to rename it middle and let's go ahead and mix it so the first thing my first thing is compression when i mix guitars some people do eq first i like to do compressions first this compressor it's not doing too much but as you can see this recording is very dynamic there are some very loud notes and then some very soft notes like this one very loud right here so that's the main thing this compressor is doing It's taming those very loud notes, and that's all I needed to do. After my compression, I usually like to add some EQ to further clean up my guitar, and dynamic EQ is great with guitars, highly recommended. There's some pretty sharp resonances on this track, especially this frequency around 250. So I'm gonna right click, <coughs> make dynamic, and I am going to be dynamically compressing this guitar, but only compressing it on that low end because that's what is really poking through on this recording. We can also just in general drag it down a bit. Next up is our sauce. So you can throw in some RC20, some phaser, some flanger, some overdrive, some distortion. You can do whatever you want to these guitars to make them sound saucy after you have cleaned them up with compression and EQ. Now I love sketch cassette. I'm gonna be throwing on some sketch cassette. Let's turn it on. Gives it a little bit of a wow. It gives it some slight dropouts and then it also adds just a tiny bit of saturation. So without it, beautiful. Now the next thing is going to be reverb. And when I'm only mixing one guitar, I like to add my reverb through parallel mixing. So you can either do this through buses by coming over here to your reverb, soloing the guitar and then adding the reverb this way. Or you can do it the way that I usually do it, which is adding in an audio effect rack, coming over to the chain, right clicking, create a chain, create a chain, calling this chain reverb, calling this chain dry. That's basically what a bus is. And we are throwing in the reverb on the reverb chain. Coming over here, let's solo the reverb. So now we're just listening to this chain right here. And if you're doing this through parallel mixing, you usually want the effects to be at 100%. And if I didn't really like the lows on that reverb, I could add an EQ 
on this chain after the reverb. Only have it affect those highs and then we can slowly bring it into the main signal. Without it? With it. Now let's talk about doubling, something that I love. I love doubling guitars and I love doubling vocals. And I do both of them basically the same way. If you've seen any of my hundreds of vocal mixing videos, you've seen me double vocals and we're gonna be doing the same thing. So I'm gonna be deleting all of these effects right here. And I'm gonna be coming over to this right track I'm gonna be copying these effects. So basically these are the same effects that I just walked through, but in a different method, basically we're just slightly adding some sketch cassette, slightly adding some reverb at 47%. So let's move it 35 to the left. And then let's listen to this other recording that is the same notes, but recorded at a different time. So whenever you're doubling guitars, highly recommended, make sure that you record it twice. Don't just duplicate the same recording, I'll show you why. But let's listen to this right track that is 35 to the right. Beautiful, now let's listen to both of them. One 35 to the right, one 35 to the left. They sound gorgeous, they sound beautiful, they sound incredible with some stereo outputs, i.e. headphones, studio monitors. Um, now, if we turn on the utility and we make it mono, so like we're emulating a phone speaker or like some bar speakers, then it will sound a bit different. And there is some phasing that you can hear, so we're gonna be getting into that, but let's go ahead and turn that off. We'll worry about that later. If you were to only have one recording and you couldn't record it again, so let's say you got some studio time, you got a really nice guitar recording and you can't get the same take, or it's a super complicated riff, and you were kind of just freestyling and you're not gonna be able to get the exact same take again. There are some methods that you can double your recording. It's not gonna sound as great. There's always gonna be a little bit of phasing, but there are some methods that you can kind of get away with it. So I just duplicated this middle track right here and we're gonna now rename it to left. We're gonna rename this to left two. And if we're gonna move them both in the middle, you're gonna tell. There is some heavy phasing going on. Um, and you know, phaser's dope. So if you like the sound of this phaser, go ahead and just duplicate your recording. But we want this to not be phased. So we are going to be moving one 15 milliseconds to the left. So that's gonna be 15 milliseconds before the beat. Left two is gonna be moved 15 milliseconds to the right. So 15 milliseconds after the beat. And now we are going to move 145 to the left, 145 to the right, and now you have. Some guitars that sound doubled, but they're the same recording, which is dope. Let's turn on the mono. You can totally hear that when you play out of a mono speaker, when you make the audio mono, the same recording doubled is gonna be very obvious. So here is a way that you can kind of get away with it. And the way is going to be making one of the tracks have different harmonics, make it have different information, even though it's the same recording. So what you could do is you could hop into this left two track right here, solo it, and as you can see, I'm not a good guitarist, so I did a lot of warping to make it sound on time. But what we could do is we could like move these recordings around like this. So this sounds out of time compared to the other recording, and it'll kind of sound like a different recording. With the delay Haas effect combined with warping your sample, it'll sound a lot better. And then let's go even further 
and change the harmonics, meaning let's mix this left one track different than the left two tracks. So let's go into Sketch Cassette and let's make the saturation be saturation, make it a lot more saturated, make it a more worn out sound. Now when you combine them, they're gonna have different information. Obviously we are way overdoing the saturation there, but that is a way that you can duplicate your main guitar recording and give it some width. It's obviously gonna have a little bit of phasing issues no matter what if it's the same recording. Here's something that I learned from a good friend of mine, Lahima. He actually was talking about this specific recording when I sent him this song for some mix advice. And this is something that you can do to your doubled recordings to make them sound better out of mono output devices like a phone. I used to love to move my doubled guitars 50 to the left and then 50 to the right. So hard panning them. And if we look over here at the levels right here and you just listen with headphones. We have audio coming from one speaker from just your left signal, no audio coming from the right. And when you pair it with the other hard panned element, it sounds beautiful. It sounds super wide and that's what we strive for. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful recordings like that. But if you were to play this song from a phone, from a mono output, there's a lot of phasing going on. And that's because you hard pan both of these elements. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna throw in some ozone. We're gonna get a visual representation of what is going on. Here we have the imager. Let's go over to this Lisa Jouse view. Also, fair warning, we're getting into some technicalities that I really don't know what I'm talking about. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I do not know what I'm saying, but I found that this does help out a little bit. Let's listen to these hard pan guitars with this Lisa Jouse, don't know how to say this, um, view. And basically this is just the, the stereo field. Imagine a line right down the middle of this and that is what the sound is coming out of a mono output like a phone. So it sounds incredible with headphones, but there's not a lot of information right down this middle line. And that's because we're moving these two audios all the way to the left and the right and leaving kind of just this empty space in the middle. So that is why when we drag in this utility before this Ozone 9 and we make it mono, it's not as present as it could be. So let's turn the mono off and let's move this left track 25 to the left. Let's move this right track 25 to the right. So we're bringing these two elements a little bit closer to the middle. It's not gonna be as spread out with the headphones. You know, it's not gonna be hard pan with the headphones, but it's gonna sound a lot better mono. So this is still stereo. Let's press play and let's look at the, the view. As you can tell, a lot more information right down this line right here. If we turn on the mono, you're gonna see a heavier line right down the middle. So that is what I have found helpful when trying to make my guitars sound better through some phone recordings. Let's turn on this harmonics track, which is basically just really heavily reverbed guitar. And it's right down the middle. You add that with these doubled guitars. And then you add it with everything else in the song and you get this before I play it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to, Blue Light is dropping July 29th. Pre-save link is in the description. If the song is out, you can give it a listen. It's my favorite song that I've ever made. Keep making music, Zolmates. Have a beautiful rest of your day.